inside you'll find there's a part overflowing with pride spilling out through my home and core and all that I face the warmth of base Rifka's embrace so much more than a place I went to all those years ago though time passed and space changed yet yeah, still I know there's a strength and a cry is in this name that I bear with the thousands of sisters I share a legion of women on a mission full of passion base Rivka etched in my ways and now a please all reach outwards unrelenting representing that the base Rivka in me base Rivka means standing like a rose amongst thorns with chassidus then planting the seeds for more Rivka means action, there's a world to transform, we're ready, committed, and sure. Ace Rivka means bar and kite embedding all I do, it's spreading the Rebbe's light through and through. Ace Rivka means living, giving in my own. A good Tavach base Rivka alumni. This is not your regular news hour. I'm Mushki Yiftach reporting live from Embrace. Welcome to the fifth annual Embrace Live. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my sister Ayla for passing on the torch of MC. And good luck to my sister Nini. You're probably up for next year. We invite you to sit back, relax, as our newscast brings you back to the days when your biggest fear was being sent to the principal's office. Up first on schedule tonight is Mrs. Liba Konica of Shlucha to Fort Lee, New Jersey, and a notable alumni of Associated Beth Rifka Schools. Mrs. Konica is famous for her leading roles in production, especially Abishter and the Israel Song. I woke up Sivchas Tyra morning and headed to Shul, Chabad of Fort Lee. We were expecting a big crowd. This year, Simchas Tyra fell out on Shabbos, and we usually have a very big crowd on Shabbos. I walked into Shul and was immediately welcomed by Ilan. Good Shabbos and good Yom Tif, he said, followed by, did you hear the news? 
He proceeded to tell me that his son Jakey, who lived in Israel and was visiting for Yom Tif, got a call from his commander in the IDF. You need to return immediately. Israel was attacked. As I stood there with tears in my eyes, he explained the news we had at the moment. There were hostages, many were killed, young and old. Israel is in chaos. I could not breathe, I could not think. I could not stop the tears. My daughter is in Israel too. There were way too many thoughts and emotions going through my mind at the time. But wait, it's Shabbos, it's Simchas Torah, the most joyous holiday of the year. I cannot cry, I cannot be sad. What do I do? What do I tell my friends and community members? I am supposed to be the voice of reason, of faith and belief. That's right, I am that person. I was trained for this. I was mentored for this. I was sent by the Labav Jerebbe to be his shliach. Maybe these 28 years of shlichus were simply for this exact moment. I will now have to fight the fight I was taught all my life. We are told that education is the most important part of a child's life. I truly believe that the person I am today is because of my base Rifka education. What I have learned, what I have experienced, has prepared me to help lead a community, to teach and connect people to Judaism, and ultimately bring this world to become a dwelling place for Hashem. Refua kaidem lamaka. Hashem does not bring the illness before the healing. I was put in place now to help myself and others feel proud to be a Jew and encourage others to feel the same. Every single person has that opportunity now, wherever we find ourselves, to make a difference. Recently, the women of Chabad of Fort Lee started a Tehillim chat called United for Israel. We are a group of 156 ladies, most of whom have never davened before. Many did not even understand what Tehillim is. Every day, I post a reminder for each woman to remember to say her chapter of Tehillim. Collectively, we are saying the entire Tehillim every single day for the safety of the entire Jewish nation, for our precious IDF soldiers, and for the safe return of our hostages in complete health. What a concept. We are doing what we can. We must encourage others to do the same. We are a chilek elekami ma mamish. We are all part of one another. We all matter. We all have a purpose. We have to do our part. This is the time to step up and make a difference. Every mitzvah that you do now should be done loud and proud. As a people, as the Jewish people, one heart and one soul. When you do one mitzvah, when you publicize it, when you are openly proud of it, it affects us all, the entire Jewish nation. All the pa'alais, all the mitzvahs that Chabad of has done so publicly has now come into great effect. We don't always want to put ourselves out there. Now we see the results. It helps others gain access and resources to do mitzvahs publicly. And in return, others will want to join and do the same. In answer to a philanthropist who wished to give tzedakah anonymously so as not to be motivated by desire for honor and recognition, the Rebbe suggested a different perspective. If a building is dedicated in your name and your name on its wall is visible to all who walk by, others will also want to give. More people will thus benefit. When you do a good deed, when you tell others, you have an effect on the entire Jewish nation. The Rebbe says, Mitzvah lefarsim say mitzvah. There's a mitzvah to publicize a mitzvah. Tonight, you will hear different stories from different people. Be inspired. Publicize the mitzvahs that you do. This will surely help others add in their acts of goodness and kindness. I have faith and I believe that very, very soon we will experience the loud echo of the Shefer Gadol, indicating that Mashiach has finally arrived. May it be truly now. Amen. This is the Bechol Hamdim,
Веретлах и Марси са бриси, да се върна пъше да и пси фел, той пси писа, и с несъпени тази фел да пшива. My father was innovative with all kinds of new ideas. They did some activity. It was quite successful and they wrote about it to the Rebbe. And the response was, I didn't see it anywhere publicized. On the other hand, there were smaller activities, but they got nice publicity and the Rebbe was very, very pleased. The Rebbe said to my father that any time when things are in the newspaper and publicized, many more people see it and that by itself is a tremendous impact. Besides for the people who participate in the actual activity, the publicity is part of the activity and part of the purpose. Stay tuned for the rest of the evening as you will hear about the amazing deeds that alumni from around the world have been involved with. But first, joining us from our location on Lefferts Avenue, we have a true gem. Mrs. Toby Halpert has been teaching in Base Rifka Elementary for over three decades, besides for imbuing us with the practical life skills like all the parts of our mitochondria and geography. Mrs. Halpert also teaches Bas Melech to the seventh and eighth grade. What we do want to publicize tonight is Mrs. Halpert's incredible connection to the Rebbe and the story she has to tell. Mrs. Halpert, the stage is yours. 18 years ago, Purim, the Mishlaich Manes that I got from Beis Rivka, came along with a special message attached. It was B'Shem the Rebbe, and it said that anyone who is involved with his Maisid, he, Evet Nishbleiben Sheldek, he's not going to stay owing anything. It was a very heartwarming message, but I had no idea that this message is going to change my life. A few weeks later, it's Pesach, and I had a very challenging miscarriage. It was the third one in a row after having six beautiful boys, and it was a few years later, and it happened again, a third one. So my husband and I went to a doctor was considered the biggie one. And after doing extensive testing and everything, he called me one day and said that he thinks I should do way more testing. He thinks that my husband and I became generically incompatible. And I'm like, I have six kids, how can that be? And he's like, well, there's a, a gene that could be dormant. And he started explaining I was totally lost but obviously, after talking to the doctor, my husband and I, we were devastated. We really wanted more children. And of course, we were still hoping we'll have girls. As we were talking about it over the next couple of days, I kept on saying that I need clarity. I don't know what to do. Should we do the tests? Should we just, and if I get expecting again, I'll lose it again. So I do need to do something. I can't just ignore the situation we were in a, a spot where we needed clarity. And after we spoke like that, the next morning, really early, my husband wakes me up and he's like stunned. He says, Toby, I had a dream. And I looked at him, I married him for so many years, Baruch Hashem, a dream? You've never had a dream. He says, I had a dream of the Rebbe. I said, the Rebbe, you saw him once in your life. And he says, yes, the devil was coming out of his house. And he was heading to a car with a bag of something in his hands. And I saw a man walking behind him. And as the devil was getting to the car, he turned to me and like he gave me a motion that looked like, come along. So I ran over to the secretary and I asked him where the devil's going. And he answered, he's going to Shver, he's going to the, to the cemetery. 
and my husband woke up. I couldn't wait for it to become a decent hour for me to call a very close friend of mine, Dahlia, Mrs. Dahlia Reichman, an incredible friend of mine. And I said, Dahlia, give me directions to the aisle. I must get to the aisle. And finally, I got to the aisle. We get there, and then we walked into the aisle. I cannot explain to you the feeling, the hergation that overcame me. We, we just stood there, and the, the serenity of the place was already a calming effect. That mixed together with the Kedusha of the place, I really, I, I don't know if I can even say this, I felt like I was like as close as I could get to the Kacha Kaddushim. That's the way I felt. I was standing there, and I see my husband starting to daven, and I said, okay, I guess I have to daven. And I started to daven and say to him, and when I finished, I didn't plan this. I said, Rebbe, I had the schus for all these years to be mechanach your techte. Please be a mile for me that I should have the schus to be mechanach my own techte, my eigene techte. And I walked out. I come out with my husband, we're like, we felt like a certain, I don't know, is it called liberated? I can't explain. I felt like I got everything off my chest. And we decided this is it. We're not, this is, that's, that's our established. We're not doing anything anymore. We were, Rebbe showed us to go to the aisle. We went. I dove into Hashem. And then I asked the Rebbe to be an advocate for me. And I left. And Bar Hashem, a year later, less than a year later, I had my beautiful daughter. But I need to tell you that when I was showing, my friends were telling me, it's a girl, for sure. That I was said, it's going to be. And it surely was. And I want to tell you that a couple years later, when I started showing again, Baruch Hashem, another baby, Talia comes over to me and she whispers in my ear and she says, it's a girl. I said, can be, Dahlia, not happening twice. And she said, you told the Rebbe Tehte. The Rebbe doesn't do half jobs. He does complete. She's a, oh, what a chassid. She's incredible. Doesn't move without the Rebbe. And I looked, I said, could it really be? It was another girl. And a couple of years later, I had my third girl. So since going to the aisle, and I wasn't that young anymore. Since going to the aisle, I had three wonderful girls changed my entire life and then also my entire outlook. Because since then, anything I needed, or whatever situation I was in, I found myself, this was my ticket. This is my entrance. I went to the Rebbe, I spoke to him, and I said, I'm coming to you. I teach in your school. I teach your tachter. And that's, that gave me an unbelievable, um, it was like security. That's what I felt. But I did notice an interesting trend over the next few years, that whenever I came to the aisle to ask the Rebbe something that pertained to Beis Rivka, the Rebbe always answered in favor of Beis Rivka. If it was, if my principals wanted me to work extra hours or to do a new curriculum, to add another grade, and someone's like, ah, oh, that's too much. Answer always was Beis Rivka that a few years ago, I was talking to Mrs. Jacobson, and um, she really wanted me to do something in the school, teaching-wise, teaching more. And, and I said, ah, it's just too much. And all of a sudden, I look at her face, and I saw in her eyes. I knew the next statement she's saying is, to ask the Rebbe. So before she even said it, I said, no. I said, I can't go to the aisle because the Rebbe is very prejudiced when it comes to Beis Rivka. And I just don't know if I'm ready to do this. So the Rebbe took care of it. He showed me signs that I just couldn't ignore. Listen to this. I have the schus of teaching Hilchas Yichud to the eighth grade. I love it. I love teaching it. I'm very passionate about it. But it's also challenging, very challenging. 
I usually, this time of the year, when I start teaching the action halacha part, there are girls that come over to me quietly after class, and they ask me certain questions, and Baruch Hashem, we can, you know, even if they, they don't really go along with everything, they hear it, and we work it out, that they should look at it in a beautiful way. I once had a girl come over to me, and she, a fantastic girl, and she just, she felt it doesn't apply to her. She says, this, this, I don't see it, and this is my, and I spoke to her a couple of times, and it got to a point where I realized that she wasn't being macabre, I was saying, and I didn't look at it as a problem with her, I looked at it as a problem with myself. And I started feeling that maybe I'm just not qualified for this anymore. This is just too, it's just not working out. First I went to Mrs. Rosenfeld's office, and she wasn't there. So I ran to Mrs. Jacobs' office, and I told her that it's just too much. Of course, she gave me chizak and explained to me, we don't know what they do here, they're macabre eventually. I don't know, this time I just walked out of the office and for the next couple of weeks, I spoke to my husband about my children, and I really felt this is it, it's time. There's other teachers that can do it, and I'll do just sixth and seventh grades, and eighth grade I will just give up. And by the time it came, Pesach, I said, that's it. I'm just not qualified for it. It was about two weeks after Pesach, and I saw everyone's telling the principals if they're coming back or not, and I knew I, Mrs. Roosevelt didn't approach me because she was like, sure, I'm coming back, and I know I need to tell her something. And I figured, okay, this was Thursday, I'm gonna tell her after Shabbos. So it was Shabbos, and I was sweeping my kitchen. And all of a sudden it hit me that I need to go over to Mrs. Roosevelt, and I, I told myself, what am I doing? One minute, I really don't want to do this. I have other plans already. I already made plans what I'm going to do with the extra day. But uh, how can I take this on my responsibility? I wasn't sure what to do. And I was like, Hashem, help me. What am I supposed to do? Because I really didn't want to go to the aisle. And I kept saying, this is not, when you go to the aisle, it's because I'm asking for a bracha, if it's my birthday, if I have a question, another question, I was sure I'm not doing this. And then, without thought, I said, Rebbe, give me a sign. This was Shabbos. Sunday evening, my oldest daughter, my friend, comes over to me and she says, Mommy, I would like to go to the aisle in the next couple of days. And I'm like, Fermi, why would you want to go now to the aisle? What's now? She says, you know, my birthday's coming up. And I said, so will you usually go by your birthday? She says, yeah, but it's like by Aymer. And she really didn't like that we wait on lines and we don't really get to be in there the way she really wants. She says, I really want to do it in the next couple of days. And it's like this, it's before my birthday. It's perfectly fine. And I look at her and I said, for me, I cannot believe it. I asked the Debra for a sign. You come over. I can't tell you, no, we're not going to Ayel. And so that means I need to go to Ayel. And that means I need to ask the Debra. Because if he's calling me to the aisle, that means I need to ask him. And so Monday night, I called a car service, and I took a round trip car service with an hour waiting to go with my daughter. And I told the Rebbe everything. First I wrote it in my pan, and then I walked inside. And after davening, I told the Rebbe, the shrift is amazing, the girls are amazing, I'm just not qualified for it. I think this is just not for me. I come out, and of course, I passed the video room, which I didn't even know if I want to stop. But I did. And what I heard the Rebbe say, it was the first word that I heard. It was ready for me. That my daughter is standing right near me, turns and says, Mommy, the Rebbe is speaking to you. And the Rebbe basically, I couldn't... I couldn't translate in any other way. And I understand perfect Yiddish. I heard exactly what the Rebbe said. And the Rebbe said that, that even, first he spoke about doctors, that things change in every generation, you can't use the same cure. But even like in Chinook and teachers, and whatever we do, we have to work along with our days and we have to be there for them and stay. And I'm, look, I'm listening, like, what is the Rebbe saying? He's telling me I need to stay. I told my daughter, okay, I hear, let's go. I get into the car and I was quiet. And she says, Ma, you got such a straight, clear cut answer. I said, but I'm not ready to accept it. I had so many, I, I had so many, so many different feelings about it. And I, I decided this is it. I'm not ready to accept it. 
but I did want my husband to hear this and my children. So I reached out, of course, to Dahlia. I said, how do I get, I was just for the aisle, how do I get uh, part of this video? I want to show it to my husband, my sons, because I'm already forgetting what that ever said, because it was so powerful. She says, oh, call, call Shafi. Shafi tells them, Mr. Shafi tells them, is a very good friend of mine as well. I love her teaching, Ms. Shafka with her, she's incredible. And so I reached out to her and she says, no problem, my husband will get it for you. And her husband emailed it to my husband and whoever heard it, if it was my husband, my father. My father's like, he told me, Toby, this is Pilipliam. He's like, this is incredible. I said, I don't know, I don't know, just too much. Tuesday morning, I walk into my Shrefka and I enter the fourth floor. And as I walk down the hallway, to the teacher's room, a girl comes running towards me. She was the girl <laughs> that I felt I couldn't get to. And she says, Mrs. Hub, can I speak with you a few minutes? I said, sure, I'm gonna put on my box. And she says, you know what happened last night? And she tells me an incredible story by the night before. Her mother had to go away. Her father gave her a key. He explained to her because he works in the basement and there's other women there and he's starting to tell different things about Yichud and why we, and she says, Ta, what? I know. And they, she said, a whole discussion with my father and she, her face is glowing and she says, she realized then that it does apply to me. And, and as she's telling me like, thank you, I'm like saying, thank you because she was a shliach from the Rebbe to me to show me. It's a second answer. The Rebbe realized I left the aisle and something. And this girl comes over and tells me this. I was very overwhelmed, but I had to go into class. So for the next three periods, I'm teaching. And then lunchtime, which when I usually, usually head downstairs, I took a big box to put into 411 in the closet because that's going to be my first class that I have on Thursday morning. And who do I meet in front of Mrs. Jacobson's door? Mrs. Elka Kaplan. Also, a, she used to teach with me, and I stayed friendly with her, an incredible woman. And I didn't see her since June before by her daughter's graduation. And she says, Mrs. Halpert, it's, wow, hashgacha practice, I see you. I need to tell you that a couple of days ago, my two high school daughters were going over halachas that you taught, and we're talking about your talk, and they were saying how incredible it is what they learned, and they were teaching it to my sons, and I'm saying, I don't know, maybe she speaks to Mrs. Halpert, maybe we have to make sure the boys learn the same as the girls, are. and she's standing there starting to tell me about my incredible curriculum in eighth grade, and I actually dropped the box, and I said, Rebbe, I hear, it's my third sign, my third answer, Rebbe, I hear, and I actually, I'm outside, sound cliche, but I actually said, I embrace it. And I told her the story. And she says, wow, I said, thank you for being a shliach of the Rebbe. And I knew this was it. And so Baruch Hashem, it's been an incredible year. And I've gone to the aisle time and time again for different things. And I was just there a couple of weeks ago because I had to go about a few things. And so I wrote a few different papers. And in one paper, I wrote about a huge thank you to the Rebbe. The Rebbe did something incredible to help me in, a personal, in my personal life. And then I, another paper, that's my birthday. And another paper, that was me a big simcha in my family. And another paper, that he should help me, continue helping me in the success for my students. And every one of these papers, I signed the same way. I signed my name, Toba Bacienta Fega. Aishas Rab Yankov Yeltsvi Halpert. Mora and Beisrifka, Kitas, Vav, Zion, and Ches. Thank you, Mrs. Halpert. Up next, my colleagues and fellow alumni in Eretz Yisrael will share their experience of being on the front lines of war. But before we jump into that story, a quick break. Stay tuned. Ace Rivka would like to thank the ongoing support and coverage of COL Live and its publisher Mika Sofer, a proud alumna of Base Rivka. On your bundle of joy, we say Mazel Tov to you. A bit for your baby, messy meals can now ensue. With love, we embrace your little one so dear. For you are alumni, we are always there. So what are you waiting for? Sign up right away, Base Rivka. 
Did you or your friend recently have a new baby? Go to bethrifka.edu slash babygift to sign up today. And now, please join us as we fly over to Eretz Yisrael to hear from alumni who are making a difference on the front lines of war. I never got into choir, so I figured now's my chance. Thank you, Mushki. This is Sarah Nadish from Chabad on the Coast in Tel Aviv. Chabad on the Coast is a Chabad house for English-speaking olim, tourists, young professionals, and families. In Tel Aviv this year, there is, in central Tel Aviv, there's a place called Kikar Dizingoff, and this is, I would say, a central hub in Tel Aviv where many people hang out, and there was outdoor prayer services on Yom Kippur. And unfortunately, there were Jews that came on Yom Kippur to dismantle davening on Yom Kippur. And it was very, very unsettling to be here in Tel Aviv at that time between, unfortunately, the different labels. Um, and it was very, very painful for traditional Jews, that fact that in Eretz Yisroel, people were stopping Jews from davening in public on Yom Kippur. And it, it was a really hard time here in Tel Aviv. And then October 7th happened. And at the same location, Kikar Dizengoff, which is, was a hub for anti-religious activities and stopping prayer on Yom Kippur, it turned into a hub of chesed and a hub of thousands of people coming together after October 7th, packaging food for soldiers and supplies for soldiers. And it really, really brought Am Yisrael together and united Ki'ish Echad B'Lev Echad. And really, it, it really healed the city from this division that we had had previously. So our focus during the war efforts were for the Olim community because anyone that made Aliyah is in a different place than someone who was born and raised here. When a soldier, a lone soldier, gets off of base, they're not going home to their family, they're going home to their apartment. When a, a wife whose husband is serving, she doesn't have her mom to send her dinner. She made Aliyah from California, who is holding her up and Chabad on the coast really, really stood up and was there for every single OLED during the war. We had something called Chabad Cares, which we called hundreds and hundreds of Olim, English speaking immigrants to check in on them. Hey, are you okay? Do you need dinner? Do you need to see a trauma therapist? Really, really in the times when people didn't have a home, Chabad on the coast was here to ensure that they were taken care of. We would send out weekly dinners to the wives of uh, reserve soldiers. These women are really the warriors. They're holding down their homes, their jobs, but who's taking care of them? So Chabad on the Coast ensured that they had dinners and babysitters and, and support. There is a guy from our community from South Africa, made Aliyah a few years ago. And on October 7th, he was called up and he was in Gaza for many, many months. And unfortunately, a few months back, there was a terrible incident in which 21 soldiers were murdered in one day. And it was very heavy in Israel and around the world. We all really felt that pain. And this soldier from South Africa, that Shabbos, came to Chabad on the coast, and he was speaking to my husband. And he told my husband that his unit was right behind the soldiers that had been murdered and he saw the whole explosion and his job was to help pick up the body parts and and help through this crisis and someone near my husband heard what he was saying this soldier and he looked at him and he said how could you be at Chabad you should be home you're in a state of trauma and this soldier looked at me and he said, this is exactly where I need to be. This is my home. This gives me strength to continue what I need to do in this war. There was two educators that believed in me and saw my etzem hanashama, saw the good in me and that I did care about Yiddishkeit and I did care about the Rebbe's vision, but I needed to have it done in a way coming from pure love and Avas Yisroel. And those two teachers were Mrs. Leila Shapiro. 
she opened her home for me and my friends. Late nights, we would go hang out in her house, discuss concepts in Yiddishkeit. She listened to all of our questions and gave us as many authentic answers as she could. And it was a safe space for girls who were going through a hard time. And another teacher, Mrs. Malka Forschner, was my seventh grade English teacher. She never gave up on me. You know, she, if I tried to skip a class, she just saw right through it. And she said, Sternasara, you can do it. I believe in you. You've got so much within. And when we went on Shluchas, she would send me messages. I'm so proud of you. Keep going. I always believed in you. The lesson, I think, like in my life was don't give up so easy on a girl. Like, read, if you see a girl at Beisrifka having a hard time, go that extra mile to invest in her life because you never know where she'll end up. I could have easily, if people didn't believe in me, I don't know where I would be today, really. But because there were educators that saw that this is a good girl going through a hard time. And she loves Hashem and she loves the Rebbe, but she doesn't love the rules. That's okay. I still don't love the rules, you know? But they, they were able to see the good in me and nurture that good. And who knows, we ended up on shluchas. But when I was in high school, that wasn't what I thought I would be. No way. That was very far from that. But because I had educators that believed in me and saw that I had potential and that my, my heart was in the right place, they really empowered me to do what my heart really wanted the whole time, which is to connect to Hashem and to spread goodness and kindness in the world. So I'm grateful for those teachers for believing in me when I wasn't a typical Beis Rifka girl doing my chitas every day and going on trips. We get a lot of children of Chabad homes that come to Tel Aviv and I never ask their last name because I don't want to judge them. I just want to see like who you are, like who is your soul, like you're so good. I don't want to cry. <laughs> like you're so good and, and all of that stuff is just, it's, it's not, it's not the real person, you know, like, and I think that's what the Rebbe saw, like, and the, the Pintele Yid, the Etzem HaNeshama is good, and everything else is just a symptom, okay, they're going through a hard time, but we can't get distracted by that because then we, we lose the vision of Hasidus, and I think that the vision of Hasidus is Avas Yisrael on a very deep level, and if we could tap into that, you'll have more Jewish leaders and from the most unexpected places and you'll have the girls in the class that you thought could never do it rise to their feminine power of Malchus and give to the world and heal the world and change the world. But you need to give them a space to do that. Thank you for the educators who believed in me even when it was tough and I didn't follow all the rule books but they believed in me. They saw the potential of how I could lead and thank God I am doing my best to lead here in Tel Aviv and bring the Rebbe's vision of Avis Yisrael and bringing Mashiach to reality. Now let's journey south to a lot which has become a center for refugees. We'll hear from Mrs. Hecht who is actively making a difference. This is Tila Henya Hecht reporting to you live from Israel's most southern city in Eilat. On the 7th of October, Simchas Torah, Israel woke up to the sound of sirens, scenes that the human mind cannot fathom. Many were shot, taken hostage, homes were burnt down, and many survivors were afraid to fall asleep for fear of having nightmares and reliving the horrors once again. But many souls were ignited on that day too, and found themselves saying Shema Yisrael for the first time and asking Hashem, please help, because there was no one else to turn to. 70,000 refugees came to Eilat, shattered, with just the shirt on their back. Most were put up by the city in hotels. Immediately, people donated food, clothing, toys, anything they could do to help ease the pain. The recognition that Hashem chose to save them, that they were handpicked, made it clear that Hashem is in charge, 
and the urge to daven and say Tillim was very, very strong. I want to share with you some brief anecdotes to illustrate this point of Ashgacha Pratis and seeing Hashem's hand in every step of the way. The first story is about Liraz, a single mom, a social worker who lived in Nativa Asera for the past 12 years. A short while before October 7th, she had an uneasy feeling and she felt unsafe. She decided she's leaving. She's taking her two sons with her. Her son was very upset about it and he tried to talk her out of it. But she insisted, and on October 7th, 20 people from Nativa Asera were murdered, some of them her son's friends. She felt so strongly that Hashem saved her and her sons, and she wanted to thank Hashem so much, so she came to Eilat as a social worker to help out with the refugees. She asked me to make challah bakes, to provide them with tillims, and she actually became a shlucha on, in her own right. And for the first time, she felt really close to Hashem. I share with her a thought on the parsha every week, and she makes sure to light candles every Friday night since. Vered Malka, a high school teacher from Zderot, was traumatized when missiles fell right near her home. She came to Eilat and was placed by the city in the Royal Resort Hotel. She had been planning her son's bar mitzvah for months now. They rented a hall, a band, catering, invitations, the works. But of course, after October 7th, all that was canceled. So we helped them celebrate his bar mitzvah in our Chabad house. Everyone in the hotel prepared something for him. My friend offered to take pictures, and the hotel hosted their whole family free of charge. It was really very moving, with mixed emotions, both sad and happy at the same time. Mrs. Hani Klein, who's very active in arranging programs for these refugees, brought down a group of counselors to Eilat for this purpose. And they gathered a group of children from near Oz to recite Psukim and say Shema Yisrael before bedtime. Then it was time to distribute toys that were so graciously uh, donated. And at the time, three of their friends were held hostage by Hamas. And they said, could we please have three more for our friends in Gaza so that when they come back, we'll give it to them? Well, two of these children have since been released. Hopefully, they'll reunite with the third friend very soon, together with all the other hostages as well. Eilat, I can say, is now a city where Jewish life flourishes and where the Torah shines brightly, just as the sun does, for all to see. And as we strive for Mashiach's arrival, our prayers extend to all who seek an end to conflict, wishing the safe return of the hostages and the return of all the soldiers with the end to the war. The time has come to greet Mashiach, and together we can make it happen. Now let's turn to Nechama Dina Hendel with a heartwarming story about our Beis Rivka alumni spread around the world, uniting to help fellow Yidin. I'm Nechama Dina Hendel, reporting live from Yerushalayim. We have a Chabad house in the neighborhood of Baca, and I wanted to share some firsthand stories and inspiration during these challenging times. We know that the Jewish people are compared to the menorah, and the Baal Shem Tov asks, why was the menorah beaten out of one solid piece of gold? He explains, just like this one unit of gold, if you bang it or hammer it in one side, then it reverberates and it's felt on the other side, so too with the Jewish people. If one Jew moves or has a bang on one side of the world, it has a ripple effect and it's felt by another Jew on the other end of the world. We have been seeing this firsthand with the war now in Eretz Yisrael. What you are doing in whatever place you live is directly impacting and strengthening us here in Yerushalayim. We're very good friends with the Goldberg Poland family, whose son Hirsch, age 24, was brutally kidnapped from the Nova Festival and now is in Hamas captivity for over 150 days. I'm personally blown away by his mother, Rachel, whose Hebrew name is Peral Hana, who has unbelievable faith and resilience and positivity. A mutual friend asked us to check the mezuzahs in their home. 
And even though Rachel told us that the mezuzahs were fairly new and expensive, surprisingly, only one mezuzah in their home was found to be kosher. My husband also noticed two places that needed additional mezuzahs. So very quickly, we were able to replace the non-kosher mezuzahs and add new ones. And including in Hirsch's room, where the mezuzah had two times the letter B's puzzle defected. And now it's kosher. The letter B spells bias, home. And we're all praying for Hirsch and all the hostages to return home safely and speedily now. When I went to the Kinnas HaShluchas, Rachel wrote a letter for the Rebbe's OL. And I, of course, brought it and, and ripped her heartfelt note there. And I was also able to come back to Jerusalem with the most heartwarming gifts that you, dear women and shluchas from around the world, prepared for Hirsch and his family. From a Resnick, my good friend from Tri-Valley, California, designed with her uh, Hebrew school a beautiful uh, mitzvah tree book with children as young as age five pledging to say Shema, light Shabbos candles, and also my dear sister, Menucha Shachad, has been rallying for mitzvahs for Hirsch ben Parochana. And her students painted the most beautiful painting with a soldier laying tefillin and dozens upon dozens of achletas of positive resolutions. I can't even describe Rachel's reaction when I brought her these gifts. She says that it gives them life. It gives them hope. Every one of these mitzvahs from the other side of the golden menorah reverberate and strengthen Hirsch and his family here in Jerusalem. I also have a friend, my best friend from high school, Yehudis Steiner, and we have been the long arm for their community in uptown Chabad of Toronto to transfer 25,000 Canadian dollars to buy protective gear for our dear IDF soldiers. And a couple of months ago, Yehudis shared with me that really tragically, one of our dear soldiers, David Schwartz, fell in Gaza, and his sister Shira is on Shlichut in their community in Toronto, and sends her children to the Gan Chabad preschool there. So my husband and I offered to be their messengers, and we brought a beautiful brunch from Holy Bagel with my brother's book, A Time to Heal, to the Shiva home on a yeshuv called El Azar. When we walked in, to this ingathering of Jews from across Israel, Shira's face absolutely lit up. She was shocked that her friends all the way in Toronto had found a way to send this huge hug of love and support here in Israel. So we've also been involved with the war relief effort and Baruch Hashem, we've been able to package and deliver hundreds and hundreds of hot meals for our soldiers and to bring them spiritual items, sing, music, words of chizuk. On one of our recent missions, we went to an IDF base in Beitar, and my brothers, Rabbi Mendel Kalmanson of Belgravia and Rabbi Yekasil Kalmanson of Los Angeles, joined us on a solidarity mission, and they brought the Moshav band, five-piece band, and these soldiers who are in the Gush Etzion area said that they never experienced anything like that. It was uplifting, there was a gourmet dinner, there was dancing, and my brother, Rabbi Mendel Kalmanson, shared some words in English, which many of them understood, very heartfelt words. One soldier got up after, and he said, I want you to know that I don't know English at all. But, he looked at my brother, you should know that I understood every word that you said, because as Jews, we connect soul to soul. And that really sums up what I'm sharing with you today. We are one beautiful, solid, golden menorah. And each one of you is illuminating your corner of this world. And Bezrat Hashem, together, we will bring the final and ultimate light of Geula now. So thank you for tuning in to this segment of Embrace Live. And now, back to Mushki. Thank you, Mrs. Nadich, Mrs. Hecht, and Mrs. Hendel for sharing your stories and all that you have done. May Hashem give you the strength to continue your incredible shluchas. And Amir Hashem, very soon, Mashiach will come and you'll be able to greet 
all your fellow alumni in Eretz Yisrael. And now, it's game show time. I wonder who your host is going to be. Hi, everybody. I'm Mushki Yiftach, and it's game show time. Are you smarter than a base Rifka girl? I don't know. Let's find out. We have three alumni and their daughters who are currently in base Rifka High School. Each mother and her daughter will battle to see, are you smarter than a base Rifka girl? Up first, we have my favorite neighbors, who I borrow lettuce, sugar, and whatever else I need. Introducing Rebbitzin Shalamis Palin and her daughter, Hinda. Hinda is a current freshie in base Rifka, but not just any freshie, my kid's favorite babysitter. Are you guys ready? We're ready. So this is how it works. I'm gonna ask a question, and whoever hits the buzzer first gets to answer. You get the question correct, you get the point. Pressure is on. Question number one, name something you learned in Chumash class. Well, the Kriyashma um, with Mrs. Raskin. I think it was Chumash Devar. Woo! I feel like she should get another point for I like think. literally like knowing exactly where that was from. Was Mrs. Raskin, nice. you should feel very proud. Question number two, according to what you learned in Halacha class, are you allowed to brush your hair on Shabbos? No. Congratulations, correct. Next question. Through learning Sichas and Tanya, you've come across many abbreviations. So try to focus. What do these stand for? Hey, Nun, Lamed. Haneska L. Woo! That's from when we do our daily Tanya together. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is a date question. Get those, get those minds rolling. What is the date of the Rebbe and Rebbitson's anniversary? The day that they got married. Well, Shem, so rejoiced. I feel like I should give her a chance, but <laughs> Yodal Kislev. Wow, star student, congratulations. Last question. I remember you liked the action. So which Yom Tif did the school burst in all these beautiful exhibits? What was the day? Which Yom Tif? I think it was in Kisley. Yes. Um, yes. Kisley. Yes. Congratulations, you test Kisley, and the score Hindu, You did amazing, but congratulations, Shalamis. You are smarter than a base Rifka girl. Can't wait to see you a little later. Enjoy. Round two, please welcome to the stage, Mrs. Esther Matuf and her daughter, Tamar. Tamar is a senior in Beis Rifka, not just any senior, G.O. So, the rules are just as before. I'm gonna ask a question. Whoever hits the buzzer first and answers is the winner. You get it wrong, it goes straight to your opponent. Are you ready? Yes. For Beis Rifka girls, of course you're ready. Okay. <laughs> True or false, the oldest high school graduating class was 1968. I'm gonna say true. Uh, mother knows best. False. Do you know what year? Nope. 1964. Wow, okay, ready for question number two. What does, let's see how well you did in your English class. Oh, I'm gonna give a hint. What does PEMDAS stand for? Isn't that math? <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay. Um, parentheses, Sorry. exponent, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. You must have had this B. Wow. <laughs> no, Congratulations. No, Who's your math teacher this year? I don't take math this year because oh, 12th really? grade doesn't have math. Oh, nice. Go, Marley. Yeah. <laughs> True or false, our favorite Shandel Axelrod started working in 1984. True. Yes, amazing. Okay, you get the bills, you get the forms, you see this word a lot, but how do you spell the word associated? A-S-S-O-C-I-A-T-E-D. Wow, almost like Mississippi, congratulations. <laughs> okay, and last and final question to see who is smarter, then a current base Rifka girl. Are you ready? No, this is a math question. Get that math <laughs> brain on. What is the square root of 81? Nine. 
And this is without even taking math this year. Congratulations, you should have a lot of nachas ba. Mrs. Matu, congratulations again. You are smarter than a current base girl. Thank, Thank you. you so much, and we're gonna welcome the next team. Thank you. And who is having fun at home? I know you don't want it to end, but this is the last and final round. Round three, are you smarter than a base Rifka girl? And joining us today, we have Mrs. Sheva Talby and her daughter, Shayna. Not just any senior. This is a Achos Hatmimim senior, and that's very special because you're gonna see why in a minute. So, each of you only have 20 seconds on the clock. If you take more time, your time is running out. The person who runs out of time, the opponent is the winner. Are you ready? Yes, we are ready. Yeah. Whoever knows the first answer, ring the buzzer and you're starting first. Okay. Purim pranks that have been done. Um, um like try from plates on the ceiling. Can they like fall down slowly? Um, wigs attached to the ceiling on a string that when you get up the wig, um, you sit down the wig like lifts up above you. I'm um, setting all the phones in the phone box at the same time, and then all the alarms ring. Put the put in the classroom the chairs like um, backwards and facing, you know, kachas and facing and outward. You want to teach in Beis <laughs> <laughs> I'm switching schools with a different school. Um, we are having the teachers wear the school uniforms and us wearing our teacher teacher's clothing. Um, oh, oh, filling Ms. Tall's office with balloons. I think that happened, or it was going to happen. Um, Sweet enough, two hmm. people. Time is ticking. Switching classes with other classes, like switching classes okay, amongst the same grade. Classes they could. Um, okay, okay. Oh, okay. your time is over. Okay. Congratulations, Mrs. Ring. You, no Wait, Mrs. Tally, <laughs> you are doing it. No way. Mrs. Tally, congratulations. You are rocking it. Next question, let's see how well you are paying attention. Category is woman in Tanakh. Esther. Hannah. Russ. Yehudas. Miriam. Um, oh my gosh. Totally blank. Sarah. Rivka. Rachel. <laughs> uh, Dina. Uh, Dvara. Nitzavas. Mm, Chana. Uh, Bacheva. Tamar. Mm. Wow, that was impressive. You said Esther? Oh, I am so yeah. sorry. Your time just oh, ran oh, out. Oh, Congratulations. Oh, Congratulations. Oh, this round, you are not smarter than a current base group of girl, but you should be so proud and have so much nachas from your daughter. Okay, we are ready for another round. Last and final round. Are you ready? <sighs> this is to see if you weren't just taking care of yourself in Beis Rifka, but you're actually looking out for other girls. Please name as many girls in your grade as possible. Oh my gosh. Hani Stolik. I'm not to say first. They're all gonna get insulted anyways. <laughs> just say anyway. Now it just looks like you don't have friends. <laughs> Tamara Mata. Kessler. Brachas Alba Zalman. Dolly Laufer. Sharni Garner. Libby Slavin. Lisa Bernstein. Uh, Shana Lipsker. My sister friend. Ada Blooming. Sylvia Gari. Um, Peggy Furman. <laughs> um, so am I. Oh, she's under pressure. Don't oh, get insulted. Oh, oh time Please. is over. If you were not mentioned, you are still very loved. They're just under a lot of pressure. On the clock, we love you all and thank you so, so much. And congratulations again, you are smarter than a base Rivka girl. Thank you so much to this amazing mother-daughter duo for joining us tonight, woo! Yeah. Well, I had fun and I hope you did too. Up next, we get to hear from the longest base Rivka mother. But first, a quick break, stay tuned.
Embrace Magazine, uniting and inspiring the worldwide community of Bayes Rivka alumni. Subscribe for free today at bethrivka.edu forward slash embrace subscribe. Breaking news! The Coens are finally graduating from Bayes Rivka. Yes, you've heard me right. After 38 years of attending PTA, numerous lost and found mix-ups, and countless hours of homework, Mrs. Yehudis Cohn's youngest daughter is heading to SEM. Let's hear more about her experience from alumni, teacher, and Bay Rifka mother, Mrs. Yehudis Cohen. Chaya, Sarah, Mindy, Rifki, Suri, Risa, Bracha, Dina, and 40 more of you out there, listen up. These three stories I'm going to share tonight are your stories. Because 46 years ago, you embraced a new student who walked into class all by herself one cold January morning. That was me, straight off the plane from public school in Cleveland, Ohio, not knowing a soul. I came to base Rifka in the middle of my senior year of high school. You welcomed me. You made me a part of the class. You became my closest friends to this very day. And because you embraced me, because you made me feel comfortable and let me know that I belonged, I breezed through those six months. Then I attended Beis Rifka Seminary in Kfar Chabad. Was it eight or 10 of us Crown Heitzers that year? And the following year, we were all back in Beis Rifka for Sem Beis with the addition of four British girls who became an integral part of our class. This past January, almost 46 years to the day that I first walked through the doors at 310 Crown Street, I attended my 38th and final PTA for my youngest daughter, Yetta, who is now a senior in high school. 38 years of continuously having daughters in Base Rifka. If that's not breaking news, it's at least record-breaking news, isn't it? Starting when Esther was three years old in Base Rifka's inaugural Head Start class, recruited by Rabbi Shmuel Fogelman Oliver Shalom when he saw my husband walking down Kingston Avenue with her, all the way to Yetta, who, when I went to the ninth grade parent school night, the grade principal called out confidently, and here's Yetta's bubby. The other mothers laughed and corrected you, Mura Goldschmidt, and I still chuckle when I think about it. So, dear friends, let's see what I've gleaned from 38 years of being a parent in base Rifka and having the skills to personally attend and teach in base Rifka as well. It's 1988. Sarah, a perky, petite college student at NYU, where my husband and I are on Schlichus, is visiting us in Crown Heights. Sarah bounds through the front door breathlessly. Walking down Kingston Avenue, I felt like I looked just like a base Rifka girl, she gushes excitedly. I look at Sarah in her long skirt and long sleeves. Well, she still has her nose ring. She isn't keeping Shabbos yet or kosher 100%, but she is so excited to dress modestly and look like a base Rifka girl. Sarah tells me, until I met you and your adorable kids, my life goal was to be the dean of the art department at a prestigious university. Now I want to be a Jewish mom and raise a Jewish family. Fast forward 35 years, Sarah is from, is raising a beautiful from family. And two days before my final base Rifka PTA this January, her daughter who was visiting New York came to meet me in person. And she is dressed modestly in a long skirt and long sleeves, just like her mom on her visit to Crown Heights, except Orly doesn't have a nose ring. The story the Rebbe told at the Verbringen of Bachram on Merkeschlichus, who don't even know the impact they make just by walking down the street looking like a Yid, that's our base Rifka girls. At a mall, shopping, or on Mifsayim, at a Chabad house, their own or their friends, at a CGI summer or winter camp, a base Rifka girl's very presence and appearance makes an impact. It excites the girls and young women around her and propels these Jewish girls to start their journey to Torah and mitzvahs. Which leads me to story number two. Are you listening, Iti and Gugi, Mashi and Rishi, Miriam? Remember, you were and continue to be the catalyst to make these stories happen. It's a few year ago, years ago, Chaf Be Shvat, at Machan Liyadis, where I'm the assistant principal, we are having a panel discussion on the impact of women in shlichas featuring a shlucha her daughter, and two girls from their Chabad house. The shlucha is my daughter, Esther. The daughter is my granddaughter, Mushka, attending Beis Rivka, living with us, her Bubby and Zadie, and her Aunt Yetta, who is a great under her in Beis Rivka. The two girls are Stephanie, who helped found their c -team chapter and who spoke the previous year at the Kinesa Shluchos banquet, and Risa, who, like me, came to Crown Heights in the middle of her senior year of high school. After completing a year and a half at Machen Liadis, Risa continued on to Beis Rivka Sembeis. 
What impacted Stephanie and Risa and helped them change the course of their lives, in addition, of course, to Esther and Yudi and their amazing family? The base Rivka girls who are their age, like my daughters Devora, Chaya, and Rivka, who spent many summers working in CGIs. The girls who are so much like them, but are so, so different than them. These base Rivka girls who are counselors are excited, enthusiastic, positive, wholesome. They keep Shabbos, they eat kosher. They are living examples of Torah mitzvahs. Even if they don't feel up to the task, they rise to the occasion. They know they are role models. They know they are the Rebbe's ambassadors, ambassadors of sanity in a world gone mad, ambassadors of light. My first two anecdotes are about Beis Rifka girls and how just by being themselves, they influence their surroundings and those around them. My third and final share is a little different. Have you ever been to a Beis Rifka production? You can imagine that in 38 years, I've been in quite a few. One of the things I love about production, and I actually heard this expressed by principals and teachers as well, is that production and other non-academic programs give each girl an opportunity to shine, to use her talents, to express her individuality while being part of a collective, and to do it all within the framework of the Rebbe Sairaz and Shulchan Arach. This year, for the first time, I heard the terms individualism and collectivism. A student at Machon Liadis, with one foot still in the woke world, told me that she believes in individualism. An individualistic culture is one where people behave according to self-interest and personal preference. Serena said that individualism and collectivism are mutually exclusive. I found that hard to believe, so I looked it up. And she's right, at least according to Professor Google. Well, I explained to her that in a Torah society, especially one based on the Rebbe's teachings, a person can be an individual and 100% part of the collective. There is no contradiction. And that's what Beis Rivka production and challah bakes and breakouts and achos atmimim and the grapevine and, and, and all of the extracurricular programs at Beis Rivka teach our girls and remind all of us adults. In this ever-changing world, we can successfully balance the desire, actually the need, to be an individual within the greater community, to be a chassid of the Rebbe, caring about even seemingly minute details while still expressing ourselves in our special and unique way. Because the Rebbe teaches us that we don't need to make a choice between the individual and the community. We can have it all and do it all. We do have it all. Well, almost all. May we merit immediately truly to have it all, the ultimate embrace and the breaking news we've all been waiting for of the revelation of Mashiach now. What do box steps, turtlenecks, unflattering baggy pants, and recording studios have in common? Production! Enjoy this medley of sixth grade throughout the years. Watch closely to see if you can spot your mother, sister, or friend, or yourself, of course. Each thick and stone and every leaf that you see needs a tiny touch to be all it can be. Horns from a ram and wool from a lamb, they become a mitzvah in the hands of men. You can do a mitzvah with me, but I know you can do a mitzvah with me. You can do a mitzvah with me, but I know you can do a mitzvah with me.
busy sewing, reaping, but inside our hearts are pining, weeping with the rabbit. That is where we want to be. Take this pond for me. garbage can. Please raise your hand if you were taught by Mora Korf. Okay, I can't see you, but I am sure that thousands of hands are being raised. A teacher for so many years, Mrs. Korf created lasting impact with her teaching of Lama Tes Malachis and her unique memorable poems. Mora Korf created Achos Atmimim, a program which is now in Chabad schools worldwide. How did she start? What was the effect it had on the girls? Let's hear from Moa Korf herself, followed by Shlucha Manhattan, an alumni and dear friend, Mrs. Gilly Shanowitz. Hi, I think most of the girls know me because I was a teacher. I can walk down Kingston Avenue and so say, hi Moa Korf, do you remember me? I was your student. I say, listen, I taught for about 40 years in Beis Rivka and if I have 100 new students each year, you know, counting the teaching of the ninth, all ninth grades and all 10th grades at the beginning, um, that means about 4,000 students. I don't always remember names. I'm really sorry about that, but I remember your faces. I heard that you wanted to hear a few things about Achasatum, how it started, what was the uh, original Achasatum, and how things it really came back for it to be part of Beis Rivka. So first, when I came to Beis Rivka, I loved it. But then I saw Tishrei time, when the girls came from Eretz Yisrael, and they came to 770, there was something that they had that I would love to put into Beis Rivka. So we made a contest. The contest was called Naisim Larebi. We're also Naisim Larebi, even though we live in Crown Heights, some of us are Shlichas, but we're going to 770, like the girls of Eretz Yisrael, who really wanted to be in 770 as much as they could for the month of Tishri, Naisim Larebi. And Bar Hashem worked out very well. Naisim Larebi was so successful that we wanted it to continue. How can it continue? We're going to make all these different things of going to 770, even during the school year. In Eretz Yisrael, they had it a whole year in a way of Shur Rishonah, where they would work hard in the Shur Rishonah. They wanted to be front row when Mashiach comes, and therefore they had this whole contest uh, and, um, and club, as you might say, go going on a whole year. So let's do it too. Achos HaTzmimim was that they should be like the sisters of the Tamchei Tzmimim or Lubavitch that it's existed with all the boys having such a kachin and doing all the things that they ever wanted. And therefore, we picked it in Achos HaTzmimim because in Riga, there was an Achos HaTzmimim before the war. And the, with the Friedrich Rebbe being there, they wanted to learn more Chassidus and the Friedrich Rebbe really, really encouraged it. 
So much so that he gave them two men, I don't remember the name, two chassidim, big chassidim that were actually called here mashpiyim. And he taught them maimarim. And the free of the Gereba asked once that a girl should say over the maimer for the free of the Gereba. Could you imagine what that was? There was such a kirav from the free of the Gereba to the girls learning siddhis. This is a new thing that started just recently, starting with the free of the Gereba and emphasized so much with the, the Rebbe that girls can also be chassidim. So therefore, we wanted that to become part of Beis Rivka as one of the goals that my daughter, Chani uh, Maranowski, uh, uh, thought of and uh, activated, actually, because she had just moved to Eretz Yisrael. So she said, I can arrange for a certain amount of girls, but we want to make it so that they will see the first year that these girls did it and were so successful. They'll want to try next year, and they will try, and that's the way exactly the way Achas Hatzbibim worked. They saw how oh, these girls went as winners who really, really worked hard and Achas Hatzbibim went to Eretz Yisrael. They had extremely a successful trip. They saw the girls in Eretz Yisrael with their organization and how it worked. He showed this enthusiasm to the girls that the, the next year more girls wanted to join Achaz HaTzvim. And so it, every year more and more girls wanted to try for the trip. And this is the way it involved into it, our unbelievable Achaz HaTzvim. Hundreds of girls joined. And they were all so excited even though they knew that only about 10 girls would go on the trip. And this is the way it involved until not only that, but other schools said, oh my, this is wonderful. We want to do it in our school too. So schools all over the world, Beis Rivka uh, oriented schools, whether it's called Beis Rivka or Beis Chaimushka or whatever it might be called, they all wanted to join. And what we did was we made a trip that included some of the girls from the other schools who also won. So they felt like, oh, we're part of this big group that it's called Agas Hatzmimim, and we are changing the world. We are. We really are changing the world. And this is the way it made the girls of Lubavitch sit in. My name is Gilly Shanowitz, and I am a proud Beis Rifka girl. I can't say it was always that way. But when I was 15, one teacher in Beis Rifka changed that. I am blessed to have grown up with incredible parents. My mother and father raised me with tremendously strong values of Amuna and Bitachain and ingrained in us that Tyra is eternal and the source for all direction we need in life. Fads and trends in parenting, education, even science and medicine are just that, fads and trends. But Tyra is unchanging, unwavering, and doesn't swing with the direction the wind is blowing. However, even though my mother was a Balas Chuba through a young shlucha in Brazil, and my father, a traditional from Jew, was Zaycha to be the Rebbe's doctor, which gave my family incredibly close connection with the Rebbe in all areas of our lives, I still didn't grow up with a Hasidic Shechinuch. My parents surrounded us with incredible Lubavitcher families who welcomed us and seeing their homes and spending time with them over Shabbosim and Yamim Taivim, of course, impacted me tremendously but nothing prepared me for the halls of Beis Rivka when I entered them in ninth grade for the first time. Rebbe, Tanya, Sichais, phrases and terms, teachers and girls rattled off their tongues like it was just basic Judaism. You know, Gilly, that Hashem wants a dir betach tainim, nisava, like a taiva. Girls, what did the Alter Rebbe explain about the Parsha? Mendarf Leb and Mitar Tzayt, obviously. A mitzvah is safsa v'chibar. Chitas, Karbanais, Mashpia, Yates Kislev, Black Wagons. It felt so foreign to me. I found it hard to wrap my head around all of it and to adjust. What can I say? Bisyakov just doesn't cover these things. I found it so difficult, I asked my mother to switch to an out-of-town school where the dorm counselor was someone I had connected with over the two previous summers she had been my counselor. But Hashem had other plans. In the summer of ninth grade, my father was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. The doctors gave him three months to live. I definitely wasn't going anywhere. I entered 10th grade back in Beis Rifka. There is no need to highlight the pain and hardships of watching my father suffer to such a degree, losing his ability to care for himself and the toll and impact it had on our family. It was truly an isayin. There is no better word for it. Baruch Hashem, my father lived for nine months. I was sitting Shiva at the end of 10th grade, 
and was back in school in time for most of my finals. So by now, I had two and a half feet out the door, and I was asking my mother to go to a local non Lubavitch school in Manhattan that my old friends attended. But my mother was advised that 11th grade is a grade not to be missed in Beisrifka. And so, back I was at the beginning of the school year in the halls of Beisrifka. And to add insult to injury, my mother had heard about a special program that Mrs. Korf had brought to Beisrifka for Tishrei the year before, called Nysen Larebe. And not only was I not switching schools, but now I was going to be taking part in a program that was so intense in its nature that less than a fifth of the school participated. I knew that this program existed. It had created quite the buzz the year before when it had been launched, even though very few students participated because it was for the very Hasidish girls. That wasn't me, but choices wasn't big on my mother's agenda and I wasn't big on throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So there I was, enrolled in a program that required us to daven and learn in 770, go on with Sayim, attend Shi'urim, far bring-ins, things I never dreamt of doing. In other words, you know the Israelis that we used to look at like they were foreign aliens? We became them, minus the suitcase, and that's a literal analogy. We spent our days and nights before and after school in 770, and for the first time, it all began to click. I was learning Sichas Maimarim, Chitas, on my own, outside of our classrooms, and it opened up my mind and heart to the incredible treasure of Chassidus. Mrs. Korf dared to challenge us to get in touch with our true selves, to connect with our Rebbe in the most intense, non-diluted way we could. She was met with skepticism, the arguments of all the reasons why this program wouldn't work or should be more attainable for the average girl were all turned down, and as a result, she changed our lives. Average girls, with no specific chayas to strengthening who we were as chassidim and our hasgashos to the rabbi, were sitting in 770, davening Mayrev, learning three sikhas a day, which led to making changes in our lives in all areas of Yiddishkeit. After Nisim, as we refer to it, joining Achas Hatzmimim, the year-round more practical format for the regular school year, was a no-brainer. And so I guess they were right. 11th grade was truly a grade not to be missed. With my new love and passion for Hasidis came my pride and joy in being a Beistrifka girl. I've never looked back. Mrs. Korf, your chance of throw out all your gayish kite, only do the thing that's right. Yes, you can, yes, you can, throw it in the can. Watching us sitting on the floors and singing and not missing a beat to let us know. Be a mensch, sit on a bench. And of course, making sure to go ahead and buy the benches and putting them in the hallways. And not to be forgotten, tell your parents loud and clear, no college, no college, I will not go near, that I fondly repeat to my children are a testimony to all that you have done to impact the thousands of students you taught. Your goal was not to seek our approval or to win a popularity contest. Rather, you cared about us enough to ignore the skeptics and critics, to see to it that we had the opportunity to reach our potential as Yidin and as Chassidim, even if it wasn't the popular thing to say. Naisen Larebe and Achas Atmimim were programs that raised the environment of Beisrifka for all of us. Those who participated and those who didn't were impacted by the energy and passion these programs created. It created such waves that schools all over the world adopted these programs and implemented them. As Yidin, we are referred to as Yehudim, with the Shairish of Haida, as we are people who recognize and express gratitude. Tonight, I am here to be Maida to thank Mrs. Korf, Mrs. Korf, you single-handedly changed the trajectory of what I valued most, where I cared to spend my time and put my energy, and gave me the gift of knowing and caring about what it means to be a chassid. I am a proud Beisrifka girl and a proud shlucha of the Rebbe, and for that, I would like to say thank you. This is for you. This is all the achoses around the world that all came about through you bringing this to Beis Rifka.
what a story. Before we wrap up tonight's new segment, please join me from your living room, cars, or wherever you find yourself glued to this newscast in thanking those responsible for tonight's event. Mrs. Sarah LeBlau, Miss Noah Liberson, Miss Rachel Klein, Miss Sarla Ehrenreich, Mrs. Hadara Prager, the Embrace Live Committee, Mrs. Konikov, Mrs. Halper, Mrs. Nadich, Mrs. Hecht, Mrs. Handel, Mrs. Cohen, Mrs. Korf, Mrs. Shanowitz, and all the ladies in the beautiful choir, the mothers and daughters in the game show, Mrs. Chaya Mushka Spiro, the entire team at 321 Motion, NYC Studios, Gem for the beautiful Rebbe video, and myself. I hope to see you around at production, PTA, but hopefully not the principal's office. A good Wach and good night. Thank you for joining Embrace Live. Thank you to our corporate sponsors who have helped make tonight's event possible. Vantage Wholesale Supply, Curse Jewelers, Screen Heights, Bot Printing, COL Live, Thank you for joining us at the fifth annual Embrace Live. We look forward to seeing you again next year.